Thanks for watching Callie's Art Tips and Tricks. For this two-part series, I'm going to be talking all about colored pencils. Um, for this video specifically, though, I'm going to be showing you the basics for using colored pencils and doing basic techniques such as indenting paper to create highlights, doing your light values and dark values, and combining mediums such as marker and colored pencil and watercolor pencils and colored pencils. Before I start, though, I want to show you the type of colored pencils I use. These are Prismacolor Premier Pencils. These pencils come in tins. They each have different number of sets, but I have the 72 set. These are probably the best brand you can get. What makes them so good is that they're rich in color, and what makes them rich is that they have more pigment than binding, and what the binding does is dull the color because it's wax, so it kind of dulls the color, but since this has less, it creates a really, really rich color, and I'll show you an example of that. And you can just see how rich and dark this comes out and vibrant. Mine are pretty worn down, but um, I have three different. things of colored pencils. The only bad thing about these I, I would say is um, they're pretty expensive. So the pencils are two dollars each which is expensive for pencils and so since I have a 72 set mine came to about hundred and forty four dollars. So that's pretty expensive just to get colored pencils so I suggest only buying them if you are really serious about art. Otherwise Crayola works just fine. All right, let's get started. All right, let's get started. So for this first technique, I'm going to be showing you how to indent paper um, to create highlights. And this is going to be used uh, for like thin areas that you want to create really light highlights um, that you can't really color around. Uh, for example, what I can think of is cat whiskers. They're so thin and white that it's going to be hard to draw around all of them and it's going to take a lot longer than you want so this is a really simple and easy technique so I'm in my sketchbook, sketchbook right now but I put I have a piece of paper over this paper and this paper is going to be my indenting paper but this paper is going to be my main subject paper so you want to put this over because if I indent so here's my example if I, I, indent, I drew the star and I really indented it and if I try to erase this, I can't really get the color out because it's so deep in there. So to make this really work, you need to do it on another piece of paper, but draw super hard. Alright, so I'm going to draw another star. So I'm really digging my pencil into this paper. So I want to get it really indented and I want it to transfer onto the other paper. And you can hear how how deep I'm digging my pencil into this. What you don't want to do is draw hard when you're sketching out your um, picture because you're really going to have a hard time getting the pencil out and when you color over it, it's not going to look good. Unless you're doing it on purpose like this. So I'm just making sure it's really deep. You want it to actually pop out a little bit. You want the paper to kind of stick out. And you can feel it too when you run your finger over it. Alright, so now that I have my star, I'm going to flip this paper over. And on this one, you can actually see the star indented on there. And it's so indented here too. And if I flip over to my next page, you can still see the indentation. So that's how, that's how hard I press down. Even on the next page, you can still see it a little bit. So we have our indentation here. And this is where the color pencil part comes in. So I'm just going to take this um, sea green color. And I'm just going to draw over this and you can already see what I draw over it and you can still see the star you can see it perfectly 
because the uh, pigment isn't getting into the cracks because it's so deep. So there you have it. There's indenting paper to create highlights, and that's going to come handy for a lot of your artwork. And you might even want to go in there with a white colored pencil. Try and get in there and make it lighter. All right. So that's our first one. Um, for the next one, the next technique, I'm going to be showing you um, kind of light values and dark values with colored pencils and blending too. And what I really learned about how to blend well is to use white colored pencils. White colored pencils are going to be your blenders, especially for um, creating really light values. If you want to create light values too lighter than the colored pencil, then it blends well. See, I'll show you an example. So I have this pencil right here, and you can see how rough it is. So I'm going to take this little subtle white colored pencil and kind of rub it in. And you can see it blended it right there. And you can tell the difference between this. Mm -hmm. It's smooth now, and that's rough, but it didn't make it lighter. So you just have to really be... Um, you really have to observe the color and translate it onto the paper. So for this one, I'm going to be using, let's see what color. Let's do orange. So when you notice when you're actually creating a colored piece of artwork, um, is that nothing is one color. Everything is has at least two or more colors in it. And this is where combining colors and blending is really gonna have is really gonna take place. So I'm not only I said I was gonna use orange, but I'm not just grabbing orange. I'm also grabbing yellows and reds. Alright, so I'm gonna go on this paper. And just like we did in graphite with the graphite pencil to create um light and dark values you're gonna start out light so maybe I'll start off with this yellow kind of a golden yellow and I'll create this all the way down just drawing lightly and then I'll go darker with a little bit darker orange and just blend it in. And I'm starting out light, but I'm eventually going to start drawing harder because you want you don't want it to look rough like this usually, unless you want unless you're doing like a texture drawing. But I like my drawings to come out smooth. So we made it a little bit darker, and then you can also go back and re, you know. Put that in, always drawing harder as I keep going. So now I'm going to take a little bit darker pencil. And I'm going to go down here. So I'm adding this darker value. And it's different using color than graphite pencils because graphite pencils are just one color. So you have to keep going back and re-blending in color. And even if you're not using white, if you want to blend, then use a light color. So like this yellow, I'm blending in here. Then I'm going to go a little bit darker with this. And then my last colors is dark red at the bottom. So you can see I've kind of created this gradient effect. And I'm using light colors to kind of blend this together and make it dark and not rough looking. Maybe I'll even take my yellow and come in here. 
but I'm really blending this out so it just flows smoothly. So there's that gradient effect. And now I'm going to show you that white trick I was talking about. So if I take my white and I blend it, see up here I'm making it super light. But if I was going to take, see this kind of rough area here? If I take it and I color over it, you can just see it's pushing and pulling those colors together. So you can hardly even tell that there's um, a line there, a color difference. And that's really going to come in handy to make it smooth. Smooth it out. So there's blending. And I want to show you an example of my artwork. So this is a peacock drawing that I did. And this is all colored pencil. But I did use a little bit of marker. But um, the background is what I want you to focus on though. This area was supposed to be blurred out because that was what it looked like in the picture. And I couldn't just use my colored pencils normally to make it look blurry. I needed something to blend them together and kind of give them that blurry feeling. So what I used is white and I blended out, I put in the color values and I used my white and I blended that all down um, to make it have that blurry effect. And I did on this side too. And with the trees here, uh, those were mixed with white and I kind of blended it into the blue, the blue sky to give it that blurry effect as well as this tree. You can see the edges especially have been blurred with white. Um, so I just want to show you a real piece of art that I did where I actually used that technique um, because that's probably one of the most important techniques you can use um, with colored pencils. Alright, so for the last technique we're going to be combining colored pencil and marker. So for markers, I have the Prismacolor Premier Markers. As you can tell, Prismacolor is my favorite brand. Um, these come in really nice little, I don't know what you call this, a bag thing. And it holds, I have two, because um, I have 48 markers. And they come in things like these. And let me just get this bag open. So this is what it looks like on the inside, and it's really nice because it holds my markers, but um, like the Prismacolor pencils, these are super expensive and even more expensive. Um, these are $4 a marker. So we had $2 a pencil and $4 a marker. So like I said before, only buy these if you're really serious in art because it's kind of a waste. Um, like I said, Crayola works just fine um, unless you really want to get uh, professional with this. So what I want to show you is how you can add detail over marker. Oh, one more thing before I actually show you what I'm doing. But what also is cool about these colored pencils is that they have two tips. Um, one of these tips is really thin. So when you use this, you're going to do it for like really thin lines. Uh, maybe if you want to outline something. And the other tip is kind of like a paintbrush. This comes out thicker and you can do kind of cool things with it. Also, this is this tip is kind of cool for calligraphy. If I want to do my name. Comes out kind of kind of nice looking. All right, so I'm going to show you I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to color this in blue. I'm going to do like a sky. So this is my what I'm going to call my local color. Local color is the color you put down before you add anything else to it. It's kind of like the base color. So this is kind of rough, but this is just for an example. And what's cool about this is that if you were going to use a white colored pencil, you can't really do that on white paper. But if I was going to put down this marker and then draw over it in white, I can do that easily and it gives it more and then you can easily like see like that you can add values to it so I'm just gonna draw this cloud alright so I just realized I need to clean off my pencil um, if you have other colors on your pencil like this clean it off first so you don't um, spread it around so I just kinda 
coated it off and now it's gone. So I can draw on this. So I can create sort of a cloud. And what is also cool is that it doesn't come out really bright. And clouds aren't like blindingly white. So it has a kind of faded value to it. And this is really rough. Um, I'm not really trying to do a 100% perfect job because this is just an example. So this is just one of just what I wanted to show you really is that you can add light values over dark values really easily on this. And so, <laughs> for example, my cloud, or you can add darker values on it. So if I was going to draw something and I wanted to add a darker detail over it, then I could do that. So I want to show you my peacock example again, because um, I think it's a good example. So this neck and face, like this black part here, that was marker. I used marker on that, and you can kind of see it here too on the back because the marker bleeds through. So that's where I used marker. And why I want to do that is... Because his neck was basically just a base color. It was just a blue. Um, and then I could go back and add lighter values and darker values over it. And it kind of just gave him a little bit of a furry look. Um, yep. So that's really that really comes in handy for that. Especially if you don't want to color in. Like it's really annoying having to color in like a lot of space. Um with colored pencil and it gets kind of tiring and it kind of comes out scribbly especially if you get bored of it so marker is good for big areas of space that you can add smaller details to it and that's what I love to do alright for this last technique I'm going to be showing you um, watercolor pencils what's cool about these is that um, they're basically watercolor it's basically watercolor paint but it comes in the form of colored pencils I have Artist Loft. Um, I don't really have a. I don't really use these that much, so I don't really have like a a nice brand. I'm not really sure what the best brand for watercolors are, but these work pretty well. Um, and I'll probably get more into these when I do my watercolor paint series. But what's so great about these is that when you're doing paint, it's hard to get in really small areas and do really small details. So when you're doing paint, um watercolor pencils are probably your best bet for little details like that. So I'm going to give you an example of how these work. Take this red. So what you do to use watercolor pencils is you draw just like you would with colored pencil. See, it looks exactly the same. You can see my indentation from a star I drew. And then take a paintbrush, dip it in water, brush off a little bit of the excess, and you just rub it on and it comes out like paint. And when you wanna when you're using these with regular color pencils, um, this is another kind of local color you could do for like a background in instead of marker if you don't have markers these are an alternative um, watercolor pencils are cheaper than markers so this is actually and you can get like a watercolor look with, with using color pencils too so there you have it so I'm just gonna let this dry real fast and then I'll show you what it looks like with colored pencil over it. Alright, so my paint is dry. Now I'm going to start adding, showing you how to add detail. So, as you can see, I have this. And I'm taking my red and I'm just going to color right over it. And add in little details here. Take my white. Very faint, but you can add white over this kind of has a cool look to it and just try a different color blue see I can add blue shapes over it 
So this watercolor is just a really good local color um, for background or big areas to add um, details over it. Alright, and that's the end of this technique video. For the next video, we're going to put it all together and create a really nice piece using colored pencils.